So, uh, we've got Mason Jones, Cage Warriors lightweight champion, um, fighting for the welterweight title soon. Um, first thing I ask is, how did like you you had a what three and zero as a pro boxer? Was yeah. that how you started, or did you do pro boxing after MMA? So it's a bit of a weird one. So I originally went into kickboxing, then went from kickboxing into judo, um, keeping up the kickboxing at the same time, and then to the judo, I ended up doing BJJ get into that sort of route and then um, I started um, Muay Thai and boxing when I was 17 just to sort of um, sort of round off my game and, um, I didn't want to go back to MMA at 17 um, I didn't I don't know uh, I think it was maybe 18 actually I didn't want to go back into MMA quite yet um, and I couldn't do judo anymore so um, I ended up uh, I tried doing a bit with with jiu jitsu a bit more. I um, went to Brazil, did a training camp out in Brazil for three months, and started hitting some more competitions up. But there just wasn't sort of the support around to do it. And um, I ended up getting with my boxing coach a lot. We was doing sessions in the days, and in the end, I was training twice a day, five days a week, pushing it as much as I could, and then get my S and T and my cardio and stuff in. And um, I said, "Look, I said I want to fight." And um, because I'd done the judo and stuff, they were a bit funnier about um, about me going back into uh, amateur boxing. So um, I literally just went went pro, went straight pro, and um, it was it was a good time in my life. I really learned a lot. But I did I had three pro fights, three pro wins, uh, bouts for different reasons um, over two years. So um, it was it was literally it was it was a, there was a lot of trouble, and um, that was what drove me back into MMA because the original plan was to get ten pro boxing fights before. I went back in just to make sure that my striking was where I wanted it to be. And um, I think that sort of showed in my early Cage Warriors career because I spent more time on the feet. I really worked striking exchanges and I really improved my game all round. And I think it makes a massive difference now. Yeah, well, I think the first thing I noticed watching your fights was you're like more than willing to stand and bang with, with someone and your hands tend to be very, very good. As you, like, you've got really good body kicks as well. Like you've Throw some really, really good kicks, and is that down to your kickboxing or taekwondo? Actually, so um, uh, I started around the same time I got in, um, about a year into pro boxing. Um, I think it was like two and zero. I was probably 18, 18, I think. I um, a friend of mine um, literally said like, if if you want to work your kicking, he was like, I can really help you tidy, tidy it up, and um. I'm the type of person I'll always say yes to things. Like uh, um, if it's if I think it'll it'll benefit me long term, I'll say yes. So he was a Taekwondo fighter, and um, I'd always heard the thing for the MMA circuit of oh, Taekwondo doesn't work. It's a waste of time. Um, just learn Thai. So um, I really started working with them, and um, I learned really quick that I really couldn't kick. Um, what I could do with kickboxing was sort of um, what I thought was a back kick. It was a reverse side kick, which I threw a lot. Um, I thought I could throw like a, a body, like a roundhouse to the body, um, a cut kick, good, but it was bad. Um, and uh, I thought I had I had so much different skills from the kickboxing. It was just, it was rugged, like I needed to be t- styled up. So um, I really started working with the Taekwondo twice a week. And, it, and the Desme fight was the main sort of, I think the kicking was the main tiebreaker so, so to say like I would have beat him without it but it really made the difference like I dropped him twice with body kicks I believe twice or three times um, once with my hands and um, it just it just smothers people like it really takes a pace out of them if you catch them in the right places and that was to be honest during COVID um, I had two weeks off after the Joe fight and then um, I was back in the gym and the only person who was sort of able to train that was in circumstance to train was Carl so we were working like two three times a week so the whole of COVID and my kicking has gone to the roof. So um, like I'm chambering cleaner, my snap, my cut kicks are going through. Um, I'm stabbing a lot better. My back kicks are going in well. Um, I'm spinning for my spin hooks. Like I'm, I'm a, I'm a whole round fighter now. So um, like I said, this is going to be a, a, a next level performance for me. You're going to see things you haven't seen before and um, I'm just going to do, do my thing and get in two belts. The, uh, two belts thing is going up a weight class is that a big weight jump for you or is that more of a you just won't cut weight for it well I am going to cut weight actually so um, I sit at around eight to 83 kilos um, during COVID like 83 and a half just under 84 so um, I brought myself back down and I've been dieting for like eight weeks and I'm down I'm cut up I'm about 82 kilos and I'm hoping to get like this I'm hoping to go in there about 79 kilos so I'd only have to cut two kilos of water um, 
just because I, I feel faster at that weight than like there's no point going in there with Adam trying to outstrength him because he, I expect him to go in there at about nine kilos. Um, I think he said um, on one of his interviews he'd probably go in about 88, which is lighter than I expected, to be honest. So, um, like, I'm strong enough to deal with him. I hit harder and I'm a better striker than him. Um, my scrambling's better. I've got a more dangerous game and I'm smarter than him. So, there's no way I really see that fight where I don't win. Um, and there's no sort of circumstance where even if the worst were to happen, I still think over five rounds I could beat him and I can't see him stopping me. So we'll see. And um, I'm going to do what I think is best. And I think I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smash him over, the, over them for those five. I mean, on the topic of your ground game, are you a, is it a black belt in jiu-jitsu and a black belt in judo? Uh, so, yeah, so I got a black belt in kickboxing. And then um, I had a black belt in judo. And most recently, I've had a black belt in BJJ. So, like, I've been... I've been around the game a long time. I mean, like I've been trained since I was seven, so I'm 25. So it's what 18 years I've been training. Um, and it's longer than it's, some guys. It's a long time. Some yeah, guys in so the UFC been... come in with a few years of experience, and you've come in with, you know, 18. Do you mean so? Area. Like I had high level judo to the point where I was competing all over Europe um, against high high level opposition. I was training with world champions regularly. Um, I've got a high level BJJ. Um, I've trained with some of the best fighters all, all, all over the UK and um, over different parts of the world. Like I trained in Brazil for three months. I trained in America, different places. Um, I really trained against good high level, like I said, high level opposition. Um, I've got good, really good striking that I think I can deal with any, with any anyone. I pro box and spar with um, a guy who fought for a world champ uh, title, and Jamie Cox. Um, he's legit and he's also a big guy. He normally sits about 85, 88. So um, we get good rounds. Um, like, I, I, I can go wherever the fight needs me to go. Um, my jiu-jitsu's good. My wrestling's good. My striking's good. Um, my cardio's good. My, I'm smart. I'm switched on. And my fight can go anywhere. So, it doesn't matter where the fight goes. I'll always beat you. That's one thing that I did notice. Like, a lot... There's Wales is, like, surging at the moment with MMA guys coming out. And just Wales has got... Seems to be... Like, every, every month there's a new Welsh person in the contender series or getting signed for the UFC. Um, <laughs> but it tends to be guys signed and you find that within two or three fights, their style kind of levels out. Like um, Brett Johns came in and he's had it rough and, you know, looks a bit, looks a lot better now after, you know, finding his feet in the UFC. Mm. Do you find if you got, do you think if you got to a big promotion that you've got the base, you know, not to have to work on certain points, you know, substantially, that you could go in and cope with anyone in any promotion at any, like, of course. on the ground or on the feet? Of course. So, like, um, in Team Alpha Male, I, I was training rounds with Max Griffin, um, Tofik. Uh, I don't even know Tofik's second name. Um, Tofik's the Risen Champion. Uh, Max Griffin's UFC World Weight. Like, I'm used to training with guys. It doesn't really matter. So, like, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, um, I just see Adam as a big lightweight. Um, that's that's the way I've been looking at it, and that's the way I'll take that fight, and that's the way I'll I'll handle that fight. But I'm ready for UFC now. Um, and obviously, I'm not going to say I'm ready to beat Habib at the moment. Um, but give me a year, um, give me a couple of couple of good preps, and I'm improving all the time. Like if you look at my fights back when I debuted, um, I've improved so much in every single fight. I'm a better fighter, and um, like I believe that I can be the best person on it in MMA at one point. And like I train guys, and I know I can push harder. I train harder than everyone. Um, I'm doing the right things. I'm always willing to learn. And like like I'm out in Ireland at the moment training with Reese McGee. Um, Training with all the Irish guys. Um, Norman Park today was down training with um, Decky, um, Decky Muck something. Uh, terrible names. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, but he's a cage warriors guy as well. Um, he's featherweight. Normally, I think he's come up for lightweight for this next fight. But um, like I just want to train with everyone. Willing to improve, and um, every single time you'll see a better version of myself. And this is going to be the best version you've seen so far. How is, in Brazil, is that, like, the jiu-jitsu specifically, is that on another level over there when you get there, or is it, you know, are we, you know, UK jiu-jitsu guys catching up? Oh, UK jiu-jitsu guys definitely caught up. Um, obviously, there's the, there was the odd monster over there um, who was, like, beyond legit, but a lot of the high-level jiu-jitsu guys who were in Brazil, they moved to America, and then, um, and obviously, to, uh, to Britain. Um, it's just a better lifestyle. Like, um, Brazil was a really eye-opener for me. And um, it's, it's a lovely country, but it's it's a different lifestyle. I was doing um, Muay Thai over at um, one of the favela gyms, and I was um, 
training uh, jiu-jitsu over different multiple different gyms. I travel different places around, around Rio and um, really, really got stuck into the lifestyle and enjoyed tournament. And um, like I, I loved it and I come back and then um, I think a couple of, couple of weeks after coming back, I did a, I went straight to a boxing camp and did a, um, did my pro boxing debut. Um, but like, this is the thing, like the whole reason I boxed was for MMA. The whole reason I did judo was for MMA. The whole reason I did jiu-jitsu from the age of 15, I think I was um, Pedro Bess's youngest blue belt. Uh, I had it just before my 16th birthday. Um, like all of it is just for MMA and all of it is to deal with top level guys and all of it is to round off my game and I am dangerous in, in any way. Like you put me on, on my back, I'll submit you. Um, I'll take you down and control you. Um, I'll be able to take you down at will. I can outstrike you at will. Um, my tie game, obviously my knees and elbows gone to the roof. Um, you just got to see the Joe McColgan fight to see the mm. knee I caught him with. Um, my kicking's getting better every time and um, like I'm still not a I'm still not a complete fighter yet. There's still things I can improve on. There's still, I've still got room to advance. And that's scary for people because, like, I'm, I've been saying since my debut, like, people should be scared to sign names against me. And then when, when they are scared, and obviously I agree to fight people and I put my name on signatures and they back out, like, I understand because I wouldn't want to fight me. Well, that's the one thing that I noticed is, like, when you're, like, when I'm interviewing someone, it's a case of, I watched your last fight uh, when you won the title on, you know, after that fight I'd say I became a fan but when I started looking like further back and further back the more you look it's like well guys sign for the UFC and they usually come in with one or two like specialties and then as I said like the rest of it rounds out you've kind of got a jump start on everybody in that sense when you get to like whatever promotion and it's a case of you don't need to go into the UFC and think right I can keep it on the feet and need to work on my ground game you like you could go to anybody and anyone, and you know yeah. if they take you down, you feel comfortable there. And that's as, like with only eight fights, and you know, as young as you are, that must be a huge head start for everybody to you know oh, massively. And I think you have to be to deal with the level of guys. And um, like cage wise would be my training reel. So um, I've learned to blend everything together because like I watch, I struggle to watch my fight, like my debut um, against Sean Luther. I struggle to watch that back because. Like, I should have finished him in the first round, and I was more than capable of finishing the first round. But one minute I was boxing, then I was, like, um, I was still into kicks in. Then um, I'd wrestle. Then I was doing a bit of jiu-jitsu, and, like, I was so loose, and I wasn't used to how slippery it was and different things. And, like, now I'm so much better. Like, um, like even um, one of my latest fights, so um, for Joe, um, obviously I outstrained him. I got a bit cocky, and um, I chased. Cocky's the wrong word. I just chased the finish too much instead of being a bit more clinical, like I was with Joe and hounding rather than being clinical. But I just, I was surprised to strike and I, um, I expected to be a more dangerous striker. And when I come into it, um, like I found him lacking. Um, but when I took him down, uh, which I, I could do at will, um, obviously I was a bit loose on the ground. Um, my back my back attack stuff was was a lot looser than I needed it to be. So um, I worked on it a lot. And now I'm finishing guys left, right and center from the back. Like this is rounding my game off. So now I've really improved my wrestling. Um, the fight against Common Day, um, I went in there with um, a little injury and um, I had to change my game up. And um, it worked out so well for me because I went in that fight and that was one of my decisions because not so much I didn't get the opportunity to finish. I just, I was like, um, I was picking him up with takedowns all the time, picking him up, picking him up. And I actually blew up from picking him up so much. So um, uh, I've really improved and... Um, like now I'm so much closer and I'm more than ready to take the training wheels off and step in the UFC now, but I'll see Adam Proctor is the next one on the horizon and he's, he's a, a legit, legit welterweight. So this will prove that I'm ready to beat the top 10 roster in UFC and to compete with the top 20. Is this, you know, are you jumping up to try and get the oh. second title? <laughs> are you jumping Sorry. up to get the second title and, uh, you know, to prove how good you are or is it to prove that you can go to weight classes? Or as lightweight uh, you want to stick it? I'm stepping up because there was no one at lightweight for me to fight. Um, obviously, everyone's calling for the paddy fights, but um, I know they, they weren't interested in the paddy fight, and I didn't really see a challenge in paddy. Um, Jack Grant's coming off a loss, and there's no one else really coming through. Like, I beat everyone else as a challenger, or they faded away. So um, I know he was there, and that was a big challenge for me, and that's what I want. I want to be challenged, because the better the challenge, the better fight you'll see, and the better I improve. 
do you think welterweight could be somewhere, you know, if you do get signed to the UFC, you'd like to try out there? Or, is, you know, would Definitely you like not. to <laughs> like, you stick at lightweight? I'm, I'm, I'm a lightweight fighter. I'm comfy at lightweight. And um, I, I'm faster and I'm better at lightweight. And that's why I'm cutting weight for Wilder. Like, I'm not going to go in there and try to be a bigger guy on the day because it's just stupid. I'm going to go in there and be my best. And my best is um, around 78, 79 kilos. And that is where I fight when I fight lightweight. Uh, two minutes. I had another one there, but it slipped my mind. I have it written down though. Oh yeah, the the Cage Warriors lightweight title carries quite a lot of prestige. You know, with the amount yeah. of people that I think pretty much everybody that's had it has gone on to do something or gone on yep. to a decent level. Is that was that something that you know when you won it? At, I remember your opponent saying before the. Fight that winning the lightweight title for him was a bigger thing than getting signed for the UFC. Do you understand that, or would you say that it was a stepping stone? It's a milestone for me. Like obviously, it's not a stepping stone because it is a milestone and it is a big achievement. But cage wise, is just the training wheels. Like this is the thing. Like um, I've seen UFC champions go into UFC and get absolutely battered, and um, I've seen people who didn't win the US the cage wise belt go in there and deal and hang with high level opposition and all it is is cage wise is is your schooling day so um i like to see it as sort of getting that belt is coming out of school with honors and coming out with the top of the class and um that's why getting two belts is such a big thing but um it was that's just the icing on on the cake for me like i just want to beat the best guys and i want to show it's all died and he ran Sorry about that. So good. Um, last question then was James wanted to know about the Paddy Pimblett fight. Why do you just not think he's up to your level at the moment, or do you just not think he's been active enough or what? No, nothing like that. Like Paddy is is a legit European contender, and um, he's going to be doing big things. But um, just stylistically wise, I don't think it works out well for him. Like I'm hard to take down. Um, and I'm I'm happy to pick him up and just smash him up over the, over the five, and um, like I think if his striking isn't on the level, I think he'd struggle. Um, obviously getting him to, to the ground, and then my jiu jitsu is legit as well. But um, I just think it'd be a bad night for him. And um, like after watching the fight with with Nad, where he fought Nad, and obviously Nad out wrestled him, like um, like I'm better again than that. Like I'd be able to out strike him and really pick him apart, strike it up. So um. Yeah, it, it would be a good fight, but um, I just don't, I just didn't see it as too much of a challenge. And then with the fact that he signed with intensity the same as I am, I just don't see that they were interested in that fight. Um, I think they want to get me gone, and then obviously if he could, yeah, they want to look to build him for the Cage Warriors like the title or get him signed as well. Um, so I, I don't know, like the fight with him first, Desme, was a good fight, and um, obviously. That fight's good to go. And I, if this fight, get, when I win this fight, if um, I'm still not gone and they want me to defend the lightweight belt, then yeah, I'd happily defend the lightweight belt against them after this. Uh, last three, you know, half one before we go. Would you rather fight one double sized Francis Ngannou or two half sized Demetrius Johnsons? Oh, Nagano. Definitely Nagano. Yeah. Um... At least I had a chance to take him down. Demetrius Johnson is literally, uh, you know what I mean? He's, he's like one of those little dwarfs that bounce everywhere. And um, he's a monster. So, um, at least Nagano um, would be slow when I could get, get a grip of him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I mean, if he caught you, it'd be quick. Demetrius Johnson would just be impossible to catch for five rounds. He'd just run, like, run circles around you. <laughs> <laughs> he's so tiny. Anyway, um, thanks for that. I will yeah, let I'm you go. Off my phone's a nightmare sometimes. That's all right, mate. It's all good. Uh, no thanks again. I'll let you go. Have me on. Speak to you soon. Thank you. You're right, mate.